Uh, I'm a, we, we used to have these conversations backstage. I used to tell, I used to tell the guys, look, <laughs> Flex, I know you don't want to pose down because Flex hated posing down. Flex didn't like work, doing a lot of work on stage. <laughs> Flex was just one of the ads, give me the trophy, I'm going to go home. Give me the check, I'm going to go home. And he used to get pissed off at me all the time because I would always stay out on stage, you know, and out there and just fight and fight and fight and fight and fight. Yeah, you love to pose, yeah. Yeah, and Flex didn't like it. And I was like, listen. We know we're probably gonna, you know, we probably gonna freaking lose. He's probably gonna give it to him. But Sean, you take him from this side. You take him from that. I said, matter of fact, Sean, you get in front of him. Flex, you get on this side of him, and I'm gonna get on this side of him. And let's just <laughs> let's just bully our way around him and just piss him off so much, right? And that's what we did. We don't pose that. We would just attack him, man. Yeah. Like little ants, you know. But I mean, that's all we could do. You know what I mean? And. It, it was some good moments. I, I love the pose down. We that, that round used to be judged too, Dave. Oh, I know. Yeah, you had, you know? you had to be aggressive, really, or you you lose points. Oh yeah, you know the pose down round used to be judged, and the routines used to be judged, and it was just great. I remember. I remember. You know, Dorian, even Joe Eda says, "Listen, you know," he says, "If I if I float you around, Leveroni, if you were Mr. Olympia, Sean Ray were Mr. Olympia, or Dorian Yates, he goes, but, I mean." Uh, Flex will. He goes, all you guys deserve to win the Mr. Olympia. Yes. He says, but what I'll do, because you're such a great champion, I'll put you on a cover of Muscle and Fitness of the Anniversary Edition. And that's what he did. Oh, he really? says, yeah. He goes, you're well deserving to be a Mr. Olympia, but if you were a Mr. Olympia, you Flex or Sean Ray, my revenue would still stay the same. <laughs> really? Know? He told you that, huh? Yeah. Wow. And Dorian, was, Dorian opened up another whole avenue of marketing. Why? Why? Because he was so big or because he was white? No, because he's from England. He's from another territory. He brought all the fans. All those fans came over. Mm -hmm. It must have been like, you know, 50, 60, or 100 people coming over to see right. him blowing all the horns. It just opened the floodgates up for, for European bodybuilding, man. Mm -hmm. And those guys over there wanted to be like Dorian Yates, you know? Right. And it just, it, it was a good move for business, you know what I mean? As well as, Dorian Yates, you know, having the nickname of the Shadow, and it was it was a great era to compete in back then, you know. Interesting. Let me ask yeah. you this. Let me ask you this question. In 1998, when Dorian retired, I know all you guys went gung ho because you're like, finally, we get rid of this guy. The title is vacant. You were huge at that show. A lot of people don't remember you at that <laughs> show. I remember. I said, uh -huh. I think that was the first year you shaved your head too. I was like. Lavroni is enormous, and you actually were a little water retentive, I felt. And then when you went to the, the European tour, you dried out and you looked retarded, and you won I know. a lot of shows. Yeah. What talk to me? Talk me through that '98 Olympia. What happened? Do you think? Because I, I thought you, you could have been vying for that title if you had been drier. I don't know what happened. I mean, you, you weren't around, Dave. Yeah. Oh, I was. You, <laughs> I you, think you got mad at me or something. No, you, you didn't. You didn't. You never called me after that. You were doing your because own thing. Because I, I didn't give you credit for helping me at yeah. the um, at the Arnold. I remember. Yeah. So I apologize. Nah, yeah. I remember you. You got upset with me. You're like, you know what? <laughs> I, I helped this MF, and he's just like, that's bull. You know, you were mad at me. You were. Well, I, you know what? I was only mad because you never called me after that. You know, you kind of just blew me off. But you know, I, I look. You know, I knew what it was all about. Oh, you know, you, it's, uh, you know the fame goes to your head sometimes. You know? Huh? You've apologized innumerable times over the years to me, so it's all good. But, <laughs> but seriously, no. I mean, you had guys advising you. What ha I mean, you've, you know how to dry out. What, you, did you overcarb? What happened? Because you were fine when you went to Europe. But it was like that for New York, Olympia, you just were not I brainy, don't know what dry. happened. I have, I have no idea what happened, man. None. To be honest with you, you know, yeah. like these shows, you know, it's like uh, it's like hit and miss, you know. Right. Why'd you shave um, your head for that show? Just to try a different look. Oh, OK. Yeah. You know, hey, I, I couldn't win the Mr. Olympia with hair. So I'll try to <laughs> I'll try to do a different presentation, you know. <laughs> what did you weigh at that show? You looked really big. It's probably about 48. Oh, that's it. Really? Wow. OK. Mm hmm. The biggest I've ever been was when I worked with you. Yeah, no, I know. I know you were huge. Though. Hands yeah. down. Hands yeah. down. Yeah. You know, did you, um, um, when Ronnie won that show, did you realize that it was going to be Ronnie for the next, whatever, so many years? Did you know that was going to go that way? Or did you just think, hey, I will come back next year and beat him? 
I didn't know it was going to go that way because it happened so quick. You know, Um, I was the first pro with a name that Ronnie Coleman beat. We were on a tour and we were in Russia and I won everything and woke up, uh, brought him to my room that night and gave him some vodka and did some shots. He got halfway (laughs) drunk. And then I sent him back to his room. <laughs> Gave him the Lavroni secrets. I don't know what the hell happened? Yeah, his ass, his ass came back pre judging. Yeah, it was shredded. Oh, good God Almighty! <laughs> and he beat me. I, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, it's Ronnie Coleman just beat me. How can Ronnie Coleman beat me? He came yeah. out of nowhere. Boom, boom, right? Right. I said, okay. I said, that's cool. You're gonna do the night champions. I have another shot at him. Right. That was the following Nothing. year. Yeah. He beat me overseas, but I said, you know, he ain't never going to beat me on American soil. Right. You know, and I came home and I trained, did what I had to do, drove to New York City. He won. I remember. He won. And Ronnie Coleman beat me again. I was like, what? This guy came from nowhere, you know, out of nowhere. Right. For many years, Ronnie Coleman didn't win anything on the tours. No, he, he wasn't even on the radar. You know, and he came back to New York City, beat me, and that set the stage for him. In May, he showed up at the Mr. Olympia. That was it. It was lights out after that. He just took off. Do you think it was because Ronnie had that that work? Like, in other words, you even said it. You admitted it. You said, you know what? When I didn't win, I, I kind of half-assed it. I, I said, why should I train so hard? Why should I do push the envelope? Because you know what? I'm coming in second. Ronnie was the kind of guy that would come in last place at the show and he would st- the next day be in the gym training like it was like his life depended on it. Do you think he passed you guys because he just had that like I'm not stopping. I don't care. I'll do this for free. you know, I just love doing this, you know. It doesn't matter to me whether I place I think, or not. I I think it was that, but more than anything and I sit back and I reminisce about this now. And I don't know if he would even answer this question, but I think I think Roddy Palmer was natural when he was at the nationals yeah i think he was natural when he, he turned was. pro he was i think he was natural when he was on tour with us and everything if you go back and you look at those photos for him to accomplish what he've accomplished and he was 100 percent natural <laughs> when he when he did when he did got you know got on the sauce yeah it just took him to the mr olympia status right right you know to another whole level to where we were already doing what we needed to do and our cycles and stuff. And we were there and he was hanging with us, but you know, being natural like that, you know, placing in the top 10 and stuff. Yeah. That's pretty incredible. Yeah, no, it is. But I'm going to give you a compliment and I'm going to give you a, a, I'm going to, and I'm going to insult you at the same time, because I think that genetically speaking, that you were just as good, if not better than Coleman. Had you trained like Ronnie relentlessly. Okay. And not yeah. and had off seasons because you didn't have off seasons. You you just you dilly dallied and didn't even train. Yeah. And if you would have gone three sixty days a year for all those years, I think you would have been better than Ronnie Coleman. I'm going to go on really? the record as saying that, but obviously that yeah. wasn't in your in your path. But I believe that genetically you had the ability to do that. Thank you. That's a huge compliment to yeah. say that. I think you would have been unbeatable, yeah. to be honest with you. And I never trained all year round. No, I only, I only trained all year round from when, up until when I turned pro, um, and then I got second in the Olympia. After that, night of champion. But when I tore my chest, I stopped. No, I know you did. And you know what? It wasn't. It wasn't like that. Kevin would actually just, you know, not look that good. He didn't. He looked like he didn't even work out. That's how. Yeah. That's you went from Mr. Olympia to like nothing. And Down the fact like that you could bounce back from that was incredible. But imagine if you didn't, if you would have stayed big all year round. Now, I don't know if your health would have suffered from that or maybe you wouldn't even be here today to talk to me. I don't know. Yeah. But I think that you would have been an unbeatable Mr. Olympia had you yeah. done that. Because no one else did that on the tour. No one, no one. Maybe Sean Ray did that, but you didn't. But no one else did that. Mm-hmm. So. I think my body was such a hyper responder, Dave, that I got big. So I remember my time I was 278. And it kind of like scared me, you know, because I got <laughs> big so quick and I felt really uncomfortable. And I'm yeah. like, oh, man, I, can't, I just can't get this big. I'm going to stop, you know, and I did. Imagine you were 300, how big you would have looked. 
I, I don't think I would be sitting here today talking to you <laughs> because my body just absorbed everything yeah. so quick and so fast. And yeah. I don't know what would have happened. It would have been pretty scary. And I, I just didn't want to take the risk of putting you know, my life on hey, like that. We all have our own path. And you, your path, you're still a Hall of Fame bodybuilder, and you know. And Thank you're you. here to talk about it, and that, I'm glad because you know what? As a friend of yours, I'm I'm happy to say that we're able to break bread and you know talk and and enjoy our time in our later life. Whereas yeah. a lot of the guys that we know, guys like Nasser and and you know the, the list goes on and on, are not with us anymore. So, but I do believe that if I had someone like you, that I that I fully trusted, you know, yeah, um, that wouldn't experiment on me at the time because I, I think you probably said, you know what, let me. Leveroni, you probably would have pushed the envelope with me a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You were a little radical back then. You well, know? you know what? It was and radical, but it was because no one well, had done it. it. But no yeah. one had done it. And, and, and in hindsight, if you think about it, you know, using insulin, you know, with growth hormone is, is actually logical because GH makes you insulin resistant. So it's actually actually healthy in a sense to restore your natural blood sugar control. Right. And and enable you to absorb your food and not have to run high blood sugars. Because a lot of bodybuilders we're finding now, Kevin, later in life are now having blood sugar issues. They're becoming type 2 diabetics because they used GH for all those years with no insulin. They had poor blood sugar control. They didn't know it, okay, because they never tested their blood sugar. And now they're paying the consequences down the road. And I think it's going to get worse for this new generation because they're using way more GH. Your generation, yeah. my generation, used two to four IUs of GH a day. These guys are using eight to 12 IUs of GH a day because it's cheaper. And who knows what that's going to lead to. Yeah. Well, you were very, very educated on it as well. And, I mean, you have a medical background and yeah. stuff. So, um, but you, you were a freak too, Dave. You were 300-some pounds. Yeah. I figured out how to grow muscle huge. and get in shape. I just yeah. didn't have your structure. If I had your yeah, structure, you, I would have been a, Mr. You were Olympia. huge. If, if you and I had a if, – if we had it kept going – yeah, it'd have been pretty. Amazing. I should have moved down yeah. to Maryland. I would have made you Mr. Olympia, and I would have. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I could have well, rode your coattails you there. With me within a matter of six weeks, you know that yeah. was pretty unbelievable. Yeah. I don't know how much I weighed when you first came down. I think I was like, how much did I weigh? When you, I first when, saw you? When you sent me a picture. I, I don't know if you mailed it to me. You sent because we didn't have there was no email or maybe the, I think you know I think that Tony Davies, who was our mutual friend, brought the picture mm-hmm. up to me. You were at 12 weeks out. I said, there's no way this guy's going to make this show. I said, he, looked, he doesn't look, he, he never trained. He's like, yeah. Dave, he's a hyper responder. I'm telling you, he's going he's gonna, to, he'll, he'll put the size back on. I said, all right, well, let's do this and do this. We talked on the phone. I'll come up in six weeks. When I came up in six weeks, and I tell the story all the time, and you took your shirt off, I almost fucking passed out because I couldn't believe the progress you had made from six weeks earlier to then was like a 10-year career in most bodybuilders. That, that, that's how much muscle you had gained. In six yeah. weeks. Unbelievable. Yeah. But it's all good, man. Well, hey. I always appreciated you, man. And um, thank you, man. Respect sure. respect you as a person and a human. And, the and the greatest compliment, practice. believe it or not, you ever gave me was you were backstage at the Junior Nationals in 95 when I won the heavyweight class there. And I don't. I think you were just hanging out because it was in Washington in your in neck of the woods. And you came up to me. And that's why you, I think you actually asked me to help you a year later. But you, you said, I've never seen anyone this, this hard before. You gave me the – it was the greatest compliment because at the time you were very successful. I was just really coming up. And, for, and I, I kind of looked up to your physique and I, I, I appreciated what you, you had done and accomplished. For you to give me that compliment, that was the greatest validation I could have gotten from any other person in the world. It was Kevin yeah. Lavroni telling me that I was the, the most shredded person he'd ever seen. Well, because <laughs> you, you had done things that – you know, guys like myself only could imagine of us getting that much size and getting that hard. Yeah. You know, you you always showed up and you I never saw you out of shape. No, nah, yeah, I, I wouldn't that allow shape. it. That's a variable we have control over. I would never allow never, it. Yeah. You know. Ever, you know. And uh, you know, you've carried on to be a huge success now for, for a lot of people and, and this platform that you built, you know. And uh, thank you. I gotta commend you on that, man. And Chris Chris Aceto, same thing. Yeah. I mean, I've known Chris and you for 30 years now. Yep. Those histories run deep. It's not like you guys are just talking and talk, but you right. guys are passionate about the sport. You mm-hmm. know us, and um, you've done a lot, done a lot for, for, uh, for the sport and all of us, man. You've grown it into what it is today, really, with these platforms and everything. So, thank you. Well, that, that, that story that, that Chris told, you know, when he first saw you at the Junior Nationals, when mm-hmm. Paul DeMeo beat you, and then you came back and beat him at the Nationals. 
was classic because when Paul DeMeo came out, if the people had listened to the radio show, when Paul came out of the weigh-in, he said to Chris, is like, no one there, right? You're going to win this? He goes, I don't know. There's this guy, I don't know. His name is Kevin Lavroni from uh, Maryland. He looked pretty good. Chris is like, what are you talking about? No one's going to beat yeah. you. You know, because DeMeo was like, was insane back then. Oh, and yeah. uh, you crawled out of the woodwork somewhere. There's, and I always say, there's always a guy, a new guy on the block, you know, who's ready to, who's hungry and ready to, you know, yeah. step in there. And that was you, man. You were the surprise I guy. I think the combination show. I needed was, I would have loved to work with Chris Aceto because yeah. he's such a, Chris, I like his diets and stuff, the way he thinks. Yeah. You know, I w always wanted to work with him. As far as him doing my diet, you doing my protocol, <laughs> and my buddy Scott Rayner doing my training. There you Scott go. Killed That's me the dream team right there. Now, when when you lost to DeMeo at that show, I, I always wanted to ask you, were you, were you upset? I mean, did you, was that like a tough no. pill to swallow? No, I, I, never, I never got upset. I wasn't disappointed about it at all because... You know, he had a name. You know, he was yeah. Quadzilla. He was famous. He had a name. And the guy showed up in shape. Yeah. You know, and his legs were just phenomenal. You know, Paul was a nice guy, man. He was he was awesome. Had a great posing routine. You know, he, he had put his, he put his work in. Yeah. You know, he'd been there before. You know, it was his time. Yeah. You know, it was his time. I, I, I mean, he, he beat me at the juniors. And uh, I'll never forget, Jim Manning came back to me backstage. And this is when I really took it serious, you know. Yeah. Jimmy put his hands on my shoulder, and he says, uh, and I was like, Mr. Mannion. And he's like, yeah. He goes, he goes, trust me, you got what it takes. He goes, you just come to the Nationals. It's four months later. He says, uh, you're going you're to do really well. You're going to do really, really well. Jim never said, no, I'll never you know, you'll win. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't. He says, come to the Nationals. Trust me, trust me. You, you come to the Nationals, you know. You're going to do really good. You're going to do really good. I said, the Nationals? What is that? Four, four, four months from now, just just come to the Nationals. Trust me. Trust me. He kept saying, trust me. Did he tell you, you to cut your hair, hair, too, or did you do that on your own? He said, what? Did you cut your hair? or Did, did he tell you to cut your hair, or did you do that on your own? No, I, I did that on my own. Oh. And then I, I was so like, I was just, it was like, God, it just spoke to me, you know? <laughs> and then I won the show. Uh, the, the Nationals, and then after that, Lee Haney goes, stick with Jim. You're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. You know, that deep voice. Yeah. And I was like, God, that was it, man. And, you know, Jimmy was like Joe Weider, you know. Yeah, yeah. He's like my father I never had, and I lost right. my father when I was 10, but Jimmy became that yeah. that father figure for me, you know. And sure. to this day, he's still that 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 person in my life that um, that's been a – you know, my second, my second father, and, That's awesome. and just I can go to and get advice about business and everything now. You know, so I appreciate him and his family and JM and and all of them. You know, hmm. so yeah. well, I appreciate you coming by and, sh and sharing some great stories from the '90s with me. Uh, like I said, I enjoy the stories as much as I know the fans do, and uh, to get yeah. the little backstories and what was going on behind the scenes, I know people really enjoy that. So thanks, Kevin, for uh, taking time out. Thank you, thank you, Dave. And uh, I want to say I really appreciate you know being on, man. And it's it's always a pleasure and an honor to speak to you because things just flow. Yeah. So yeah, thanks absolutely. a lot, man. How's the uh, signature series doing over there in Europe? Still doing killing you it. You tell over there? me. You tell me how it's doing. What do you think? You were killing it the last time I saw you over there in Dubai. You said you guys were doing great. Is is business still as good as ever? Yeah, yeah, still the same. We've grown, we've grown probably about thirty five percent since then. Wow, because I know yeah. you were doing great business in the Middle East and all over that place. Yeah, man. Yeah, you got to go out. Me and Richie was talking about this earlier. Um, I think because of the tours, you know, I'm no, I'm so comfortable with traveling, you know, overseas because I would go and do seven or eight shows yeah. know, overseas in many different countries. We do. Six different countries. And you can actually sit weeks. in the seat now. You don't have to walk around the whole time. Yeah, you know, so for me now, it's like, you know, that that base is already filled. So that's part it's part of my life. They're part of my family over there. And um, I enjoy going out on the road now, just giving back with the Lavroni Signature Series. Not about selling supplement, supplements, but implementing a healthy lifestyle for sure. those guys over there who want to learn, you know, about, uh, um, you know, being successful as business and, and growing into the sport and creating, you know, their um, 
their passion and their destiny and their dreams come true. So awesome. That's what it's all about, man. Absolutely. Amen to that. Kevin, thank you so much. And uh, we will certainly be having you back on the show in the future. And uh, have a great uh, week and stay safe out there in Maryland. Do you think the gyms are going to be opening up pretty soon? Yeah, I think, uh, I think the gyms are opening up. Uh, I think Exile Fitness is, is open up now, you know, up there in Pulaski Highway. But matter of fact, guys, I want to give you guys a shout-out. When things do get back to opening up seriously the way they should, I know a lot of people want to – you want to visit a hardcore gym, um, you know, other than, you know, coming out of Jersey, New York area, stop by Exile, Exile Fitness on Pulaski Highway in Baltimore. Uh, my good friend up there, Bob, you know, he's the owner of the gym. It's like 40,000 square feet of madness wow. up there, man. So, yeah. We're going to talk we next have... time. I'm going to get you on. We're going to talk about what it's like to own a gym because you owned a great gym back in the day. That's oh, another yeah, whole conversation, definitely. though, so save that thought. Yep. And we're going to get Lavroni back for part two. I want to talk about what it is to own a gym and how to have a successful gym. For now, though, we are out of time. I'm Dave Palumbo for Kevin Lavroni for another edition of Live With Brought to you by Species Nutrition. We'll see you next time.